today we're talking about the graph of tangent and cotangents. You'll be able to graph these, the last two of the six, um, by the end of the period, okay? Now tangent and cotangent look a lot different from secant, cosecant, sine, and cosine, okay? Uh, look, oh, look back to page one, where our parent functions are. We're going to fill in those last two flaps on that uh, golden rod color sheet. So open up tangent and cotangent. We're going to do the last of these graphs. Okay? And just like before, we're going to piece together by going around the unit circle. Now, before we get started, we know tangent to be what? What's another way to represent tangent? Y over x. Okay? So tangent is the same thing as saying y over x, sine over cosine. Okay? So when we're when we're going to fill in this table, we got to keep that in mind. We're looking at these ordered pairs on our unit circle, but we got to divide y by x, okay? And again, I don't know why there's no zero, but I want to do zero as well, okay? So, thinking about our unit circle, going around it, okay? And zero radians. That ordered pair was what? A good little time for review unit circle over x. What was that? Zero. One, zero. So the tangent of that, y over x, would be what? Zero. Zero over one, which is just zero. Good stuff. Okay? Now, power over four. Power over four is right there in the middle. What was that order pair? Zero. 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 So when you divide that square root of two <coughs> over two, divide by square root of two over two, what do you get? One. one. You're dividing the exact same thing by two. Okay? Power over two right here at the top, what's that word here? Zero. <laughs> so, bless you, bless you, bless you. So when we do the tangent of power over two, it's undefined. What's going to be happening there, power over two? We're going to have an asymptote, okay? Let's keep going around, okay? Just like with sine and cosine, there's a pattern as well as with tangent. What's the order pair of three power over four? Negative root 2 over 2, and positive square root 2 over 2. So when you divide them, you get a negative 1. And then right here at pi, what's that order pair? Negative 1, 0. Negative 1, 0. So 0 divided by a negative 1 is 0. You see in the pattern? Okay. Right here, all the ones in the middle have the same order pair of root 2 over 2. But in the third quadrant, both of these coordinates are what? Negative. And when you divide two negatives by each other, you get a what? Oh, two. So what's the tangent of 5 power 4? 1. one. Uh, 3 power 2, what's the order pair? Zero. And what's negative 1 divided by 0? Right here, again, another square root of 2 over 2. Square root 2 over 2, but this time, what? Y is negative. What's a negative root 2 over 2 divided by a positive root 2 over 2? And lastly, 2 pi is the same thing as 0, which is 0. So let's plot these points. We have 0, 0, power over 4, 1, 3 power over 4, negative 1, pi, 0, 5 power over 4, 1, asymptote, negative 1, 0. They have to go through these points, and we talked about asymptotes before. Curves do what as they, when you're, when asymptotes are involved? They're going to do what? They're going to get close but not touch. So this is going to come through these points, get really close but not touch. Same thing over here, get really close but not touch. This is what tangent looks like. And of course it keeps So where would you say the asymptotes are going to occur on the graph of tangent? Where are they going to occur? At every pi over 2. Are you sure about that? Close. We're trying to figure out where do the asymptotes occur. They repeat. It's going to be a pattern. So they're going to repeat every certain amount. They repeat. 
eat every pie starting from where? Plus pi n. That's where the asymptotes occur. <coughs> they, they start at pi over 2 and it happened every n pi. What does n represent? Any integer. Any integer, okay? So that's going to be pi over 2. If you add pi, you're at 3 pi over 2. If you subtract pi, what's pi over 2 minus pi? So there's going to be an asymptote here as well. Where's the next one going to be? Negative 3 pi over 2. So they have it every pi starting at pi over 2. So you kind of see how the rest of the tangent is going to happen? You guys see it? Yes. Okay. Where are my zeros? What's another word for zero? I said last week. X intercept. So I have an X intercept at 0 and pi at 2 pi. Where's the, where's the next one going to be over here? Negative pi and so my zeros happen every pi. How would I represent that? <coughs> pi is in pi. Okay. So I talk about asymptotes. Talk about zeros. Why does that end? Because because tangent is a continuous function. Okay. It, it doesn't just stop at 2 pi, it doesn't start at negative 2 pi, it goes way beyond those. So n represents an integer, okay? So that means that any whole number, positive or negative, that if you plug in there, that's where an asymptote's going to be. Like if I plug in negative 2, that, or that's where a 0 is going to be. If I plug in negative 2, it's going to be a negative 2 pi. That means there's going to be a 0 on tangent, because there is. If I plug in a positive 1, that means 1 pi. That means there's so if I plug in 100, 100 pi, further down this graph, there will be a zero at 100 pi. Same thing with the asymptotes. There's going to be an asymptote for every pi starting at pi over 2. You have to put this. You can't just put nothing because then you're saying that there's an asymptote at zero, but there's not. You're saying there's an asymptote at pi, but there's not. Starting at pi over 2 and adding every pi after that or subtracting every pi. It can be a whole number or a positive number or a negative.
So each asymptote is separated by a pi. So our period is pi. So make a note of that. Tangent is different from sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant. Its period is pi. Okay? Questions? <coughs> cotangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Okay? So if you have the tangent flap open, you basically just have to do the reciprocal of each one of those ordered pairs. Okay? Does everybody have the flap open? Okay, look at tangent. What was the tangent of zero? zero. So when you flip that, when you take uh, the reciprocal, it's going to be what? Undefined. undefined. Because one over zero is undefined. Okay? What about at power four? Take that value, flip it. Zero. What is it? One. It's one. Because think about it, one over one. And you flip it to the one over one. Is this supposed to be x over y? It is, yes. Cotangent is x over y because it is the reciprocal of tangent. Now, the next one's a tricky one. Not so much for us. We got this to be undefined. And the reason why is because it was 1 over 0, correct? So if we flip that, it's going to be what? 0. zero. What about 3 power 4? What's the cotangent going to be? Negative 1. At pi, it's going to be undefined because it was originally zero on tangent. So if you flip that, it's uh, one over zero, undefined. What about at five power four? Three power two? Seven power four? And two pi. It's a pattern, guys. It's a pattern. You see the pattern? So you really picked a team that on and on. So wherever it's undefined, there's going to be an asymptote. So following the same pattern, where else is there an asymptote on this graph? Uh, 3 pi, 4 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi. Asymptotes happen every n pi. You can say pi plus n pi, but there is one at zero, so you can just say the domain. Which means our domain is all real numbers except, except n pi. In general, what are my zeros? Pi over two. Pi over two. Plus n pi. Because they happen every pi units starting at pi over two. Which means where's another zero going to occur? Negative pi over two and and negative three pi over two. Let's grab the rest of this, okay? Pi over 4, 1, 3 power 4, negative 1, 5 power 4, 1, 7 power 4, negative 1. Cotangent looks like tangent, it just goes And the asymptotes are also in a different spot if you notice. Okay? Now that's where you're zero Yeah. So we can kind of get the rest of this. Follows the same pattern, yes? Yes, see it? Do I have an amplitude? No. What's my range? And my period. All right, so when it comes down to graphing these functions, we can still do it the same way. Really and truly, if you remember that tangent shoots up, right, while cotangent shoots down, then you can 
you'll still use the big five to graph these, okay? So, let's go ahead and let's sketch this out. We have zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. Now, the ones that go with these, they are not, you know, one, zero, negative one, zero, you know, whatever. If you need to flip back, what was the tangent of zero? It was zero. So you can remember that zero starts at zero for tangent, then it's going to go zero, undefined, zero, undefined, zero. Okay? That's the pattern for tangent. Now let's take a look at this. That 2 has the same effect that that 2 would have had if it was a sine graph or a cosine graph. What does that 2 affect? Yeah. Your x is because it's inside, it's attached to the x, which means that I'm going to multiply, add, subtract by, by 1 half. So those rules still apply. Okay? B, uh, multiply by 1 over b, add your phase shift. Okay? So this is going to be 0, pi over 4, pi over 2. This has not changed. 3 pi over 4, and pi. I'm multiplying all my x's by 1 half. Is anything happening to my y? Nothing. So now we can graph this. Yes, you guys are making your own graphs. Now, one thing that does change with tangent, you remember with sine and cosine, the formula to find the period? Right. For tangent, though, it's just pi over the absolute value of b. The period for tangent, as well as cotangent, is going to be pi over b. <coughs> So let's get these ask to uh, let's get these uh, points in here. I'm at zero zero pi over four undefined. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote in pi over four. Pi over two, I'm at a zero. Three pi over four, I'm at an asymptote. And at pi, I'm at a zero. And since I know tangent shoots up, then I know I'm going to be going like this to draw my tangent. And I'm going to be looking to see, okay, did you exactly cross at one? No. I'm going to be looking to see if you adjust the period and you have it going in the right direction. And that's how you graph it. Now, the one thing that I did not do in the video that I didn't know until after I started doing my own key was that I did not identify or locate any of the vertical asymptotes for any of the, the problems that I did on Friday, okay? So we're going to fix that today. We're going to locate these asymptotes, okay? Where did the asymptotes occur? Right, but that's for the original tangent function. On this graph, where are the asymptotes now? Pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. And it continues the pattern. How far apart are pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4? Pi. So my asymptotes are going to occur at every n pi starting at what? So these are your asymptotes. If I were to keep going, adding pi to pi over 4 <coughs> consecutively, and now what happens the rest of my asymptotes. <coughs> Correction, the distance between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 is actually pi over 2. So they have an every pi over 2 starting at pi over 4. Yes?
Here we go, okay? So, this right here, we can write that as 1 fourth x. Does that affect my x's or my y's? My x's, I'm multiplying all my x's by what? 4. So the same big 5 are now going to be multiplied by 4. Okay? So this is actually getting stretched out pretty far. Okay? That's going to be 0. What's 4 times pi over 2? 2 pi. 4 times pi is 4 pi. What's the next one? 6 pi. If you notice, it follows a pattern. The next one is going to be 8 pi. I'm multiplying all of my x's by 4. So 0, pi over 2, I mean, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi. Yeah. <laughs> But it's important that you make your, your table so I know exactly what these values are. Now it's tangent. Does tangent start with an asymptote or does it start with zero? So it's going to go zero, undefined, zero, undefined, zero. Where do my asymptotes occur? Six pi and two pi. So my asymptotes are going to occur every what? Every 4 pi, so I'm going to say 4 m pi, starting at where? So let's get these graphs in, okay? Just draw the graph of tangent x over 4. Here's our graph. Making sure we label. We label, we label, especially if you draw it by hand, okay? Why do you do the next one on your own? I think the next one is another one. Come on. We'll cotangent one together. Then the next one I want you to do on your own. Okay? All right, cotangent. Cotangent shoots out. Shoots down. So our graphs are going to look like this. But let's figure out what all is happening to my x's and to my y's. My y's are what? They're flipped. This means that they're going to be flipped over the what? X-axis. So in actuality, the original cotangent, if it gets flipped over the x-axis, it's going to look like tangent. That negative means it gets flipped over the x-axis. And now this is going to what? <coughs> It's going to be moved to the left, pi over 2. So I'm going to subtract pi over 2 from each of my x values. Okay? So what's my first x value? And then I got subtracted, so. What's pi over 2 minus pi over 2? Zero. Zero. Pi minus pi over 2? Pi over 2? 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2? Pi. And 2 pi minus pi over 2? Okay. Now, this is cotangent. It's still cotangent. Even though it got flipped over the x-axis, so now it's looking like tangent, it is still cotangent. Does cotangent start with an asymptote or does it start with zero? So it's asymptote, zero, asymptote, zero, asymptote. So now at negative pi over 2, I have an asymptote. At pi over 2, I have, have an asymptote. And at 3 power 2, I have an asymptote. How often do my asymptotes occur? Every pi. And we can say starting at negative pi over 2. We can even say starting at pi over 2. We can even say starting at 3 pi over 2. But you need one asymptote to start with. It could be any one of those asymptotes.
Now, how should this shoot? Remember, we got flipped over the x-axis, so this should really look like a tangent function. But we are graphing negative cotangent to x plus positive. Give this one a try. Give this one a try. <coughs> Does tangent start at zero or an asymptote? Zero. So I'm multiplying all of my x's by what? Negative, Negative one over three, so that's going to be zero. That's going to be a negative pi over 6. That's going to be a negative pi over 3. That's going to be a negative pi over 2. And then that's going to be a negative 2 pi over 3 once I multiply all of those by negative 1 over 3. Is everyone okay up to here? Now, what's my phase shift? That's going to have to either add or subtract at this point. It's going to be what? I'm here in mixed phase. <laughs> C is a positive pi, so it's going to be a negative pi over the absolute value of negative 3. Absolute value of B. So we're going to actually subtract pi over 3. Does everyone see how that goes? So this is going to be a negative pi over 3. It's going to be a negative pi over Be a negative 2 pi over 3. Negative 5 pi over 6. Negative pi. That's good. And normally tangent looks like this. But that negative there means I'm making all my x is negative, so it's getting reflected over the y-axis. So if I reflect this over the y-axis, it's actually going to look like what? So is it a phase? It's going to look like cosine. And it's supposed to look like cosine. And again, it's going to look like this because it got reflected over the y-axis. Here's the next one. Last one. So what's happening to our graph? X are being multiplied by 3. Uh, this is cotangent. Is it going to look like normal cotangent? Yes, it is. It's just going to be stretched out a little ways. So, what are my x's? I know this was zero. That's easy. What's this one? 3 pi over 2? 3 pi? And hey, well, where is 9 pi over 2? 5 to 4 pi, so 4. And cotangent starts with an asymptote, but it starts with zero. So there we go. I have an asymptote at zero. My next <coughs> one is until three pi, and my next one is until six pi, and I did it again. I forgot to identify my asymptotes, so I'm gonna do it for this one. Where are my asymptotes? They happen every what? They happen every three pi. So I'm gonna represent that with a three in pi, starting where? At zero. So that's where my asymptotes are. Every and pi. So my next asymptote would occur at what? Nine pi. And then, and then twelve pi. So cotangent shoots down. And there's my graph. I 
did I do my acetone fear? My acetones occurred every what? How often did my acetones occur? Okay. Yeah, I need to be. 